Hello, I'm David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prom. And you might wonder, why would a guy who's a professor of nuclear plasma radiological engineering be talking to you about a vaccine? Well, it turns out I'm also a professor of medicine and have done some research on this. So I've had people ask, hey, I don't want to get that vaccine. I don't know what's in it. So I thought, let me try to explain it. The active ingredient in both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines is mRNA. And that stands for messenger, that's the M, ribonucleic acid. And here's a uh, microscope picture of the actual RNA. Now, what is this thing? What does this do? So what it does is it brings a message to the ribosomes. Remember RNA. And what's a ribosome? You can see there that it's a little part of every cell. It's the factory that makes proteins. So the mRNA gives an instruction to the ribosomes to tell it to make a specific protein. And you can see here on the right, that's coated with a bunch of different uh, amino acids, and that lets you know what protein to make. And an important thing is that this mRNA, once it codes for that protein, it's gone. So you might say, well, what protein is it making? It's making what we call the spike protein on the COVID virus. All right. Here we have on the right a model, a pretty accurate model, of what the COVID-19 virus looks like. And you can see all those little red, I don't think they're actually red, but the things that are sticking out, these are the spikes. Okay. And when you have a uh, spike protein, the RNA only makes the spike. It doesn't make the whole virus, right? Just makes those spiky things on top. You might say, well, why do you want to make a bunch of these little red spikes? Aha. Uh -huh. That's because of your body's immune response. So, when your body sees something in it, it doesn't recognize. Okay? like the spike protein, what it does is it eventually makes antibodies. It makes antibodies, and these antibodies, okay, um, destroy, they bind to, and then they destroy the cell that these spike proteins are connected to. Now, when we got the shot, right, which put in the mRNA, which made the spike protein, and our body makes antibodies, when you have the vaccine, it, it doesn't destroy viruses at this point. It just destroys these. But the key to this is your body remembers. It remembers so that if it ever sees this spike protein again, it's all primed to be able to destroy the cells it's connected to. For instance, if you, after getting the vaccine, and after your body had made these antibodies and made the cells that remember them, you get the COVID virus, it leaps into action, makes a bunch more antibodies, and kills off the virus. So, that's the main ingredient. But you might wonder, what else is in the shot? First, it's about six drops of fluid, three-tenths of a milliliter, so it's not much. And the other things that are in the Pfizer, right, there's an actual chemical list of the formulas. I know you might have to scroll in to look at it, and there's a reference. But basically, there's three things. There's lipids, which are a type of fat. And this helps this mRNA get into the cell in the first place. It lets it get through the cell wall. It has salt. You have to adjust the acidity level in this so it's compatible with the body. And it has sugar, plain old sucrose sugar, and that is an antifreeze. The key is it doesn't have much of all this, right? We're talking about six drops. 
um, in the shot of what goes into the shot. Now that's the Pfizer vaccine. The Moderna has very similar stuff, lipids, salts, and sugar. And it also has uh, some uh, actually tiny bit of vinegar and acid stabilizers. And these are things that keep the mixture stable as it's being transported. So that's what's in the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine. Now here's some common questions, okay? Why is one of them stored colder than the other? And why is one three weeks between shots? And why is one four weeks? You see, to get these approved, you had to do a research study. You had to give the vaccine to tens of thousands of people and give a placebo to tens of thousands of people and watch who got COVID, who didn't, if there were any side effects, et cetera. That all has to be done before the things were approved for use. In that process, they had to pick something. They picked what they thought was best, and what Pfizer picked and what Moderna picked were slightly different. But once they showed it worked in those test groups, in those studies, that's what they're stuck with using. All right? Another question. Should I get vaccinated if I've already had COVID? Aren't they already immune? Well, here's the deal. How much of this spike stuff did your body see? If you had a real mild dose, sure, you made some antibodies and some cells which remember how to make them, but maybe you didn't make that many. Maybe the cells that remember how to make these antibodies, you didn't have that many. You didn't need them because you had a mild case. So in those types of cases, all right, you're going to want to boost up your immunity. That's why by taking this mRNA, making spikes, having your body build the stuff that fights against them is very effective. Now it could be, all right, that um, um, you're worried about getting sick from getting this. And you might have heard that it's a good sign to feel a little sick after the second dose. But here's why. The first dose, you've now produced a bunch of cells that can make antibodies. So you get your second dose, you get your second shot, you get more RMNA, it makes more spikes. Those antibodies say, wow, look, invaders, let's kill them off. And you feel under the weather for a day or so, right? It's your body fighting off these spikes. They're not going to hurt you, the spikes, but your body doesn't know that because it's getting ready to fight something that really can hurt you, which is the COVID virus. Of course, if you already had some immunity because you had it, and the process of having two of these shots that might make you feel poor is, uh, is daunting, then maybe you should get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because it's only one shot. Now, it is a little different. Its main ingredient is different, all right? What it is is a dead cold virus, and it's designed to tell your cells to make the spike protein mRNA. So there's another stop here. For the Johnson & Johnson's, you get the shot. It gives cells instructions, okay? And those instructions make the mRNA. This is the J&J. &J. Then the rest of the process is the same. Moderna and Pfizer make the mRNA in a factory, in a lab somewhere, and that's inside the six drops of liquid. Johnson & Johnson's case, they put a dead cold virus that has instructions to tell your cells to make the mRNA, which then go and make the spike protein so your body can make antibodies. So key thing, too, in this dead cold virus is it doesn't reproduce, it is destroyed in the process of doing this. Are there other things in the J&J &J vaccine? Sure. Balance of ingredients looks very similar to the other twos for the very same reasons. So what are the risks? Well, first, let's talk about what the COVID virus does. It goes into the cell, all right? Then it, um, puts DNA into the nucleus, that creates instructions 
those instructions, they don't just make mRNA for the spikes, they make the whole virus over again. What a virus does is um, COVID infects your cells and makes more COVID viruses. Lots more, right? And when it makes these more COVID viruses, then it kills the cell. And all of these new viruses go out and infect more cells and kill them. And it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. And this is why a virus can kill you if your body doesn't fight back. All right. In fact, if we look at what this virus does or, or other viruses, this is a fascinating graph. This is the number of deaths per week in the United States in the last four years. More people die in the winter than the summer. All right. So this is all causes, old age, you name it. Now, you notice that in January of 2018, there was a, a, some increased deaths. That was a particularly bad flu season, right? And influenza killed in that thing 61,000 people who would not have died anyway, who are above this average deaths for our country. Look at 2020. Look at this virus, the pandemic, the COVID-19 virus. Right there in 2020, that's 377,000 more people who died. All right? And that was just 2020. As of taping this today, we're up to about 600,000 people who have died of the COVID virus in the United States. So we wanted to talk about risks. Let's look at numbers. Chance of dying from COVID-19 in the U.S. Take the 600,000 people who have died, divide it by the 330 million people in the country. That's one in 550. Yes, older people die at a higher rate than younger people. Okay, I'm just looking overall. But people at all ages can die. Now, let's compare this to other things we think of that are rare. How about getting struck by lightning? Turns out, in the U.S., one in 15,300 people may get struck by lightning. Think of it a very rare event. And now let's think of a complication from getting the vaccine, the risks of getting the vaccine. And one of the worst ones, one of the ones that was so investigated they even stopped giving out the J&J &J vaccine for a while, was the chance of blood clots. There were 15 people that got that out of 8 million who had gotten the dose. That's one in 533,000. So this is, uh, you know, numbers, straight up. Just like when I do my energy videos, we've got to look at the numbers. But there's another number, and that's this 10%. If you get COVID, there seems to be about a 10% that you're going to be what they've called a long hauler. And it could be that you just feel sick for a long time, but it could be things like you lost taste and smell. I know a 12-year-old friend of my grandson's. Six months after getting COVID, he still can't taste or smell. And he's 12, right? There's about a 10% chance of this, not just this part, but other things like extra fatigue or um, a sense of depression. These things are hard to measure all the time. And so it's an about thing, but there's somewhere around 3.8 million people that are in this 10% because 38 million have already gotten COVID-19. So, the risks of vaccines, well, vaccines have been used in the United States for over 100 years. They have kept us alive from viruses which make more viruses, which make more viruses, which eventually kill you. Many of you, almost all people in America, have had vaccines when they were young against a variety of childhood diseases. These vaccines work the same way in the response they trigger in your body.
Now, another question is, do the vaccines actually work? Do they actually stop COVID from making more COVID viruses? And the answer is yes. Those trials, and not just those trials, but now the data from 100 million people who have gotten this. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are over 95% effective. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, 70% effective at preventing infection, but 100% effective at preventing serious disease. But wait, you say. What about recently when eight people got COVID after being fully vaccinated in the New York Yankees? Well, they had the J&J &J vaccine. They must have gotten a fairly large dose. They're tested daily because they're you know, going out and playing sports. They didn't even know they were sick. They tested positive. And in a few days later, they would likely test negative again. All right. None of them felt sick because of this thing. And if they fell in that 70%, I'll tell you, good thing they had the vaccine, or they probably would have gotten very sick if they got that large of a dose from someone. Okay, so what is not in the vaccine? There is no microchip or 5G tracking device. Here is the size of a chip if you're going to chip your pet. So you can find them, track them, identify them, right? And here, on the same scale, is the size of the needle and the liquid and the vial it goes through. There is no way a chip that could, could be big enough to do anything, to be tracked, to communicate with the outside world or anything, is going to fit through that needle, all right? There's also nothing magnetic in the vaccine. If your arm is sweaty or wet, you can stick a magnet to it. It has nothing to do with being magnetic. In fact, that picture I took last night, went to my refrigerator, I took the little heart-shaped uh, refrigerator magnet off, right? I licked it, I stuck it on my arm, took the picture. It sticks just fine. I didn't get a vaccine in that spot. I don't have anything magnetic in my body, right? There are other things too doesn't shed. Hey, if you have COVID, you're shedding viruses. The COVID virus goes everywhere in your body, including in your saliva, including in your nasal cavities. When you breathe, it comes out. When your body makes these spike proteins, they don't go anywhere. They're stuck to cells and your antibodies kill them. Nothing you take in a virus, get in a viral shot, in a vaccine shot, spreads outside of your body. So I want to leave you just with a couple cartoons. And of course, I couldn't put the cartoons up because I don't have the usage rights to them, but um, they're, they're funny nonetheless. And there was one where you see a person, they're eating a hot dog, right? They're eating a soda pop. They're eating a bag of chips. And they say, vaccine, hell no. I have no idea what's in that. Well, hopefully now, because of this video, you do know what's in the vaccine. There's another one where you don't know exactly what it's saying, but you see the, the line for saying, you're not sticking that in my body, and then you see two panels. You see the panel on the left is uh, the shot, right, the vaccine shot. But the panel on the right is the ventilator being put down a person's and that leaves us just with a bit of a serious note. I've had a son-in-law and two grandchildren get COVID-19. The grandchildren's case were fairly mild. Um, my son-in-law was sick for, for several days. And most unfortunately, I had a good friend, another scientist, around my age, die. Getting COVID-19 is no joke. Getting a vaccine can perhaps stop you from getting it. And that's what you need to know about what is in the COVID-19 vaccine.